Touchdown! 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 The Bills make me wanna shout. Kick your heels up and shout. Throw your hands up and shout. Throw your head back and shout. But come on now, the Bills are making it happen now. Stand up now, come on and shout. Yeah, 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 yeah. Shout it right. Bills fanatics, welcome back to the Buffalo Fanatics podcast. We are getting to crunch time. We are just over a week away from the kickoff of the first Bills game of the year. And this Saturday, we have roster cutdown time when all NFL teams must cut down their rosters to 53 players by 4 p.m. Eastern time on Saturday. And in light of this, I imagine that the news around the league is about to pick up as I expect a lot of those cuts across all 32 NFL teams to start rolling in on Friday and into Saturday. So I thought there's no better time to go over a final 53-man roster projection on this week's podcast. We are going to go over every position and try to come up with a 53-man roster based on what we know about the direction that the Bills front office and coaching staff wants to head, based on what we've seen in training camp and throughout the preseason. What I'm also going to do is, uh, well, if you, some of you may recall, in June, I did an initial 53-man roster projection. So when I finish this projection, I'm going to go over that initial projection and see where there are differences based on, I guess, what's happened over the last month or two. So let's get started. And I thought what we'd do is we'd actually, rather than start at quarterback, which I guess is kind of the traditional way to go over these roster projections, Rather, I think I'm going to go backwards and start, uh, first of all, with special teams and then the back end of the defense. And then we will backtrack on offense, too, all the way to the quarterback position. So we will start with our special teams players. And we'll start with the long snapper. I think uh, Reed Ferguson is firmly entrenched to make this team as our long, long snapper. He's been pretty solid throughout his career and... Uh, really, that's where the buck stops in terms of solid special teams players, at least in the kicking game. Quite honestly, I would not be disappointed if we had a new punter and perhaps a new kicker entering the season rather than the guys that we have on the roster currently. But since I can't predict players from other teams that are going to be cut, I'm going to relegate this 53-man roster projection to uh, guys that are currently on the roster. So starting at kicker, uh, I guess we have to stick with Stephen Hoshka for now. Now, it's probably more likely than not that Stephen Hoshka does make the team. I just don't know if there's better options out there. Obviously, Hoshka has not really been the same since uh, in that injury uh, late last December. He's really struggled since then. He struggled in training camp and in our first two preseason games uh, before last week's Detroit Lions game. Uh, he was perfect in that football game, made a field goal over 40 yards and two extra points. So Hoshka is likely going to start the season as our place kicker. But it is one of the positions that I'm less, the least confident about on this football team. And it's such a key position. You leave a lot of points on the board when you're missing those field goals. So I just hope that he does overcome the struggles he's had of late. And we don't have to start seeking a replacement early in the season for Stephen Hoshka. Now with the punting position, I think it's probably the most likely position where we pick up a free agent. But for the purposes of this exercise, I'm going to have to choose Corey Barocres here, even though I'm clearly not comfortable with his play in the game versus the Detroit Lions. He had two pretty weak punts to start off the game. He's really struggled all offseason. Uh, Corey Carter, the other guy that was in camp, struggled as well. Uh, he was cut this week as we picked up another defensive lineman, Jeff Holland, a former Auburn Tiger uh, but I'm going to choose Baroques here, but I think we'll be scouring the free agent market. Uh, Ryan Allen, a guy the Patriots recently cut, might be a guy to keep an eye on. I haven't heard much free agent chatter about him since he was cut by the Patriots. But it would not surprise me in the least if he's a guy or there, if there's other guys in the league that we keep close tabs on and then we do sign at some point early in this season. So those are our special teams players. We have Steven Hoshka, Corey Baroques, a kicker and punter respectively, and then our long snapper is Reed Ferguson. We're going to move on to the secondary, and we'll start with the cornerback position. I think the top four are firmly entrenched and are going to make the team. Uh, starters Tredavious White and Levi Wallace. Our starting nickel corner will be Teron Johnson, 
And I think Kevin Johnson has shown enough in his first off season with the Bills to, to that the Bills should be pretty comfortable with him as our fourth cornerback and the, really a pretty strong position group we have here with those first starting four. And after those four, we have a few players who have been uh, pretty impressive at times in the preseason. Uh, we have Captain Munnerlyn, who I think is going to make the team. I'll slot him in as our fifth cornerback. Uh, he just offers some veteran experience. He can play inside and out, uh, preferably inside. And uh, he's a guy that the Bills coaching staff and front office is very familiar with. And they brought him in here uh, for a reason, to provide shore up some depth in our secondary. And uh, I think he makes the team. And then for that sixth cornerback spot, I'm going to stick with Lafayette Pitts. He's made the team the last two years, uh, mostly for his special teams prowess. And I think when you get down to the sixth cornerback spot, that's what you're looking for, a really good special teams player. And I think Pitts offered that. Probably unlikely that we'll see him uh, play on the defense at all, if or very limited snaps this year. But I think he's going to make the team as our sixth cornerback, mainly for what he offers on special teams. We're going to move on to the safeties. We'll start with our starters, pretty locked in, and Mika Hyde and Jordan Poye. As starters, they're probably the strongest position group or one of the strongest position groups on this whole team. And then I think I'm going to stick with another veteran to be our third safety, and that's another former Carolina Panther and Kirk Coleman, who's come in and really provided an intensity. I think the Bills coaching staff would be pretty comfortable if one of the starters uh, went down to have Kirk Coleman be the guy that can step in and man one of those starting spots if he has to. And then I'm going to keep one more safety, so four safeties. And that's going to be Saron Neal, a second-year player who the Bills front office is really excited about. He can step in at corner and at safety. He might actually get some time uh, during the regular season at that nickel cornerback position. We also saw in OTAs that it was used pretty often as a blitzer, so that's another asset that he brings to this team. And I think that versatility is really going to help him to be his calling card and give him a foot forward to make this roster as the fourth safety. Unfortunately, that means that in this projection, we're going to cut some pretty nice players that I really like. Uh, Jaquan Johnson, our sixth-round draft pick out of the University of Miami. I fully envision him, if he does get cut, as being an ideal practice squad candidate. Maybe somebody that we can bring up uh, during the season. And then another guy I really like who I really thought had a good chance to make the team last year is and Dean Marlowe. He's had a pretty nice preseason. He also offers a little bit of feistiness back there. Had a nice interception in that first preseason game. But I just think we're too solid at the safety position and we have some pretty decent depth. So it's going to be hard to keep all of these guys on the roster. And he is a cut here. Then we're going to move on to the linebacker position. Again, pretty solid starting group in Lorenzo Alexander, Tremaine Edmonds, and Matt Milano. They're all going to make the team, of course. And then as a backup, uh, another guy who I think the coaching staff is comfortable with to step in if there are injuries or if we need to fill in at middle linebacker is Julian Stanford. He stepped in when uh, Tremaine Edmonds was hurt last year, so I think he's going to make the team again. I'm going to give the nod to Corey Thompson as well because... I think the Bills have really been grooming him as Lorenzo Alexander's security blanket and backup. He can also play special teams, which is going to be his primary role this year. So he makes the team as well. That brings us to five linebackers. I think we're going to keep seven linebackers. Interesting to note, I read this week, uh, actually Ryan Talbot reported that uh, Bills linebackers coach Bob Babich was on Mike Tice's podcast and had dropped that the Bills are only planning to keep six linebackers. I hummed and hawed over this one, but I, I don't know if six linebackers are enough. And it, it came down to me that between keeping an extra safety or keeping an extra seventh linebacker, and I think with Maurice Alexander's versatility, he can probably step into a safety position in a pinch. I did give the nod and kept seven linebackers on this team. So Mo Alexander's the next guy up. Uh, he's another guy that's been around the league for a while. He has quite a bit of experience on special teams. Uh, so I'm going to select him to make this team. And then with the seventh linebacker, I have to give it to the youngster here, Voshan Joseph. Uh, the Bills front office made an investment in him in this past year's draft as a fifth round draft selection. Uh, they've been really grooming him to play a key special teams role this year. Uh, although he's been fairly slow to develop so far in this offseason, I think they do think that there is some potential there to groom to one day be a starter on this team. So Voshan Joseph gets the nod as the seventh linebacker on this roster projection. And that would mean that Dion Lacey is a cut. 
a bit of a surprise cut just given his special team's prowess. but this is a pretty deep roster and we're going to have some tough decisions on some of these cuts. It's too bad Deion Lacey's been a good special teams player with his time with the Bills, but he's not going to make the team in this uh, roster projection. We're going to move on to the defensive line. Again, we'll start with our starters who are all fairly firmly entrenched in their roles. We have Jerry Hughes and Trent Murphy as our ends. And then Ed Oliver and Star Latulale are going to start inside at the defensive tackle positions. And then insofar as backups at the defensive tackle positions, uh, I think they're pretty f- fairly set in stone in the two Phillips and Jordan Phillips and Harrison Phillips. I thought there was a time early in the preseason when Harrison Phillips might be on the roster bubble. Uh, He played fairly late in that first preseason game, but then he bounced back against the Carolina Panthers and had a really disruptive game. He's still a young player, and I think he's a fine backup, in particular at the one technique position uh, where the Bills have seemed to be grooming him as Star Latulale's backup. Insofar as backups at the defensive end position, Shaq Lawson was another guy who I wasn't so sure about going into this preseason, but he's been very solid. I think it'd be nice to have some rotational depth at the defensive end position, and he's a pretty solid player. Uh, We have one more year of Shaq Lawson before he's going to command a new contract, and I think we're going to milk that cow this year. And then for one more defensive end that makes the team, I'm going to take our seventh round draft pick, Daryl Johnson. I've spoken about how he's been my preseason darling, my preseason crush this year. Actually, earlier today, I read a really nice article on Daryl Johnson on the PFF website. They showed a few pretty nice clips of uh, his diversity, showed an inside counter move, showed him coming off the edge, and showed him with a strong bull rush in that Carolina game. Uh, So I'm really excited about Daryl Johnson, uh, and I think he's pretty much, he's getting to the point where it's really going to be very, very hard to cut a player like that. And I think the buck stops there with the defensive line. I think we're only going to keep eight in this scenario. Again, it's uh, some pretty tough cuts here. Mike Love, who's uh, shown flashes, still a bit inconsistent. I think he's going to be another uh, potential practice squad candidate and a guy that might be one of the first guys called up to the active roster if there are injuries. Uh, This scenario also means that we'd be cutting Eddie Yarbrough, a guy who's made the team the last few years and hasn't really done much in the regular season, but always flashes in preseason. And I think he's just one of those bottom of the roster churner type players that uh, finally doesn't make the cut this year. And I think if Daryl Johnson starts developing, uh, Yarbrough is a player that we'll likely forget about in a few years from now. So that is the defense. And it is 25 players that make this team on defense. Uh, Eight defensive linemen, seven linebackers, six cornerbacks, and four safeties. Of course, we have three special teams players as well. So that would mean that would bring us to 28 players. So there's actually 25 players that make the team on offense as well. So it's a fairly balanced roster projection. So we will move to the offense, and we will start with the tight end position. And we will start with Dawson Knox. I think he makes the team, just given that he was our third-round draft pick. We haven't had a chance to see much of him in the preseason because of that hamstring injury. He seems to be on the verge of getting healthy now. Uh, We might see him in a little more action in that fourth preseason game. I don't know if he'll be a starter or anything going into the regular season. He'll probably be behind uh, what looks like our thinnest position group but Dawson Knox is going to make this team I think another player who I think is going to make this team uh, mostly strictly for his blocking abilities and that's Lee Smith guy that's been around a while doesn't offer much in the passing game uh, but he's an excellent blocking tight end and he will be used in that capacity I'm sure in the regular season and then to start the season, I'm going to give the nod to another 7th round draft selection, and that's Tommy Sweeney, who's been impressive over the preseason in practice and during the games. He's made a few nice plays uh, in that Carolina game. He's just gone out there and capitalized on a lot of the injuries across this position group. And it's not out of the realm of possibility that he is our starting tight end early in the season as Tyler Croft nurses his way back to health. It may be one of those peculiar situations where Sweeney ends up being our starter starter early in the season, but ends up getting cut uh, when Tyler Croft does come back. Of course, Sweeney would be an ideal practice squad candidate as well if he is cut at any point during this cutdown or later on. I am envisioning that Croft will start on the physically unable to perform list, so he's not in this final 53-man roster projection. And another guy who is not in this roster projection is Jason Kroom, who was our starter for most of last season. It seemed to be a guy that was really developing uh, as a receiver. 
but unfortunately due to the injuries he's another guy that's battling a hamstring injury it's one of those uh, what have you done for me lately situations and unfortunately uh, Kroom hasn't been able to demonstrate much because he's been out and he is a cut in this scenario so we will move on and we'll do the offensive line next uh, this is a position group that's still a bit in flux I don't think we've uh, fully determined who's going to be the starting five uh, I think we can comfortably say that Deion Dawkins will be our starting left tackle next to him it looks like it's going to be Quinton Spain he's been most the left guard for most of the early training camp in the preseason at center uh, Mitch Morse is going to make the team as our starting center don't know if he's going to play that first game as he nurses his way back from the concussion but he's going to make this team of course and then what I'm thinking uh, right guard I think it's going to be Spencer Long who wins the starting gig I think he's demonstrated enough. It's going to be really close between Spencer Long and John Feliciano. And both of them could be backups at that center position. But I think what I've seen the last few weeks is that the coaching staff really wants Feliciano to concentrate on center as uh, Mitch Morse's backup. So it's probably going to be Long as the starting guard. And it'll save uh, Feliciano to be that first backup off the bench. Of course, Spencer Long did struggle at center last year when he was with the New York Jets. I think some of that was due to the hand injury though. But that may be another reason why he's the starting guard and not the first uh, backup at center. And right tackle, this is one I've been kind of battling back and forth with. But I think the Bills coaching staff is probably going to give Cody Ford the chance, the opportunity here. He played much better in that third preseason game against the Detroit Lions. Had a really, really nice block on the Devlin Singletary touchdown run. I think they'll start with him as the starter and Ty Niseki will be the primary backup at tackle. He'll make the team. That's five starters and two backups so far in Feliciano and Ty Niseki. And I think we're actually going to keep two more offensive linemen, so nine total. I think another guy we're going to keep is the new guy, Ryan Bates, who's been pretty impressive uh, very quickly. Very A little surprised by how impressive he's been. He's also very versatile. They've been he played tackle in college. The Bills have tried him out at center. He can likely play guard in a pinch. So I think he's going to make this team as maybe a bit of a surprise player to make the team. The Bills did trade for him, so that tells you that they did have their eye on him and they do think highly of him. And then the last spot, I'm going to give Wyatt Teller the nod here. This is a really close one. I thought about keeping another defensive lineman, perhaps Mike Love. But I'm going to stick with Teller just because we're a little less uh, certain insofar as starters on the interior of the offensive line and Teller did play fairly decently last year when he stepped into the lineup and then he's looked pretty good in preseason as well so I think he has a chance to develop into a quality starter and it's just such a scarcity of offensive linemen in this league so I'm going to keep Teller on the active roster here and now we will move on to the wide receiver position uh, this is where it's going to be pretty interesting at the back end of the roster we talked quite a bit about how the first five are pretty much set in stone we have zay jones john brown cole beasley uh, andre roberts uh, as a special team standout and then robert foster now foster's a guy there's been a lot of talk or chatter in the buffalo fanatics community and some people think he might be a surprise cut we haven't really heard from him much during the preseason he's been kind of relegated to a backup role he has been battling a foot injury recently there has been chatter that he might be in the coach's doghouse but I just don't think you can give up on him just yet. A guy that uh, came in and during the down the stretch last year, he was averaging uh, what would have been a 1,000-yard season over the course of a full year. He looked like he had some chemistry developing with Josh Allen. Of course, he's got blazing speed, good size. He's still developing. I think it's just too early to cut the cord on a guy that just demonstrated so much potential last year. And even if he isn't a starter, I think he's going to remain on the active roster. So that gives us five receivers, and I'm actually going to keep seven receivers in this scenario. Uh, the other guy um, that I think is almost getting to the point where he's almost a shoo-in. If, if not, he's very, it's very probable that he makes the team, and that's Isaiah McKenzie. Just a really exciting guy with the ball in his hands, and Brian Dable used him pretty creatively down the stretch last year, and I think he's got some tricks up his sleeve for him this year. He's a player I get really excited about, about when he does have the ball in his hands. I do worry about the fumbling but until that happens, he, I think he makes his first uh, 53-man roster. And that's going to bring us to the last wide receiver that I'm going to project to make this team. And this one makes me very excited. It's Dakil Duke-Williams, the player we brought over from the CFL's Edmonton Eskimos this past offseason. 
Now, early in OTAs and training camp, uh, Williams looked like a bit of a long shot to make this roster. Even in that first preseason game, he didn't play much and he wasn't getting many special teams reps. And then came along the last two preseason games and he's really started to blow up. Uh, now, as we talked about previously, Williams brings uh, such a unique element to this wide receiver core. He's just a really big and strong guy. He had two really nice touchdown grabs, particularly that second one against the Detroit Lions where he used his size to box out the defensive back and then showed really nice strong hands at the catch point. Against the Lions, Williams played the most snaps of any receiver with 37 snaps. I think that's probably because the Bills coaching staff is also trying to get an extra look at Williams to see if he does have the chops to make this team. And when it comes down to it, I think they'll keep him. I really hope they do keep him. Because I like the whole story coming up from here in Canada down to the NFL. Now there is another angle to consider and that's Josh Allen. Might not be the quarterback that has success throwing to these bigger receivers who can't seem to get any separation. We saw that with guys like Kelvin Benjamin last last year. And then Brandon Bean went out and made a concerted effort to get uh, a few receivers that can separate in this last offseason. Uh, but I still, I'm going to stick with Duke Williams here to make this team as a guy who offers a different element. I don't know how much playing time he will get early, uh, but I'm really excited to see if Duke Williams could develop into a worthwhile starting wide receiver in this league. And now we move on to the second last position group, and that's the running back position. Another one that's pretty interesting. I hummed and hawed about LaShawn McCoy, actually. I've talked about how he could be a potential cut or trade candidate just because of that salary and the emergence of Devin Singletary and the fact that we have Frank Gore in the backfield as well. But I think that Bills do value his veteran leadership. I think they will keep him around. He, had, he looked really good against the Detroit Lions in that last game. He looks like he might be rounding into form. And I think we're a better team with LaShawn McCoy on this team. And since we're going to be contending for a playoff spot this year, I think the Bills will keep him around. Uh, Frank Gore is going to make the team. I think that's almost very close to a certainty. I think he's still going to be a primary backup to LaShawn McCoy. And then Devin Singletary is uh, quite clearly making this team as a really impressive rookie who is probably going to be weaned in slowly because we have McCoy and Gore on the team. But these two older running backs may be prone to injury as well, just given their age and their prior injury history, at least with McCoy the last few years. And I think I'm going to stop at three running backs and keep a fullback as well. I think Patrick DeMarco, another one of the leaders of this team and the coaching staff, really respects and values what he brings to the table. I think he'll make the team. But Sonoris Perry was a tough cut just because of his special team's ability. But he did fumble in that Carolina game and is not like a player that's uh, totally irreplaceable. TJ Yeldon's another a fairly decent NFL caliber player who's not going to make this team because of the depth we have at the position. So those two guys and Marcus Murphy are going to be cuts. Then we move on to the quarterback position group. And I think this one's fairly obvious at this point. Of course, Josh Allen is firmly entrenched as our starter and the most important player on the team. His development will be critical if we are going to be a playoff contender for this year and for years to come. And then Matt Barkley is clearly going to make the team as the backup quarterback. He's been extremely impressive in the preseason and I don't think any of us would be too uncomfortable if he did have to start games in spot duty if there are un any unfortunate injuries to Josh Allen. I don't think Tyree Jackson is going to make this team. He's just struggled a little bit too much in the preseason. He just hasn't looked comfortable. Uh, he might be a practice squad candidate if the Bills do think he still has some developmental opportunities. It might even warrant a position switch. Uh, we'll keep an eye on that one, but I, I just can't envision him making the team given the struggles that he's had this preseason. Uh, it's a guy who really should have stayed in school at the University of Buffalo or wherever he would have transferred to. And so that's it. That is uh, the final 53-man roster projection uh, just days ahead of cutdown day. I will summarize all of the players that make this team again uh, very quickly. We'll start actually at quarterback. We have Josh Allen, Matt Barkley. Then at running back, we have LaShawn McCoy, Frank Gore, Devin Singletary, and Patrick DeMarco. At wide receiver, we have Zay Jones, John Brown, Cole Beasley, Andre Roberts, Isaiah McKenzie, Duke Williams, and Robert Foster. At offensive line, we have Deion Dawkins, Quinton Spain, Mitch Morse, Spencer Long, and Cody Ford. Then Ty Nisecki, Ryan Bates, John Feliciano, and Wyatt Teller. At tight end, we have... Tommy Sweeney, Dawson Knox, and Lee Smith. 
On the defensive line, we have Jerry Hughes, Trent Murphy, Ed Oliver, and Starla Tulele, uh, Cameron Phillips, Harrison Phillips, Shaq Lawson, and Daryl Johnson. At linebacker, we have Matt Milano, Tremaine Edmonds, and Lorenzo Alexander. Then backing them up will be Julian Stanford, Corey Tonson, Vashawn Joseph, and Mo Alexander. Then in the secondary, at cornerback, we have Tredavious White, Levi Wallace, Teron Johnson, Kevin Johnson, Captain Munnerlyn, and Lafayette Pitts. And then at safety, we have Mika Hyde, Jordan Poye, Kirk Coleman, and Saran Neal. And on special teams is the combo of Stephen Hoshka, Corey Baroques, and finally, long snapper Reed Ferguson. So if we compare this roster with the 53-man roster projection I put together in June... Well, we have eight different players that make this team. Eight new players and then eight guys who I would have considered back in June that would make this team that don't make the team. To go through those players that didn't make this round of cuts. Well, in June I had uh, TJ Yeldon making the team. Uh, Jason Kroom, two guys who I talked about, uh, would be tough cuts. Uh, Adrian Waddle, who unfortunately suffered a season-ending injury. Then on the defensive line, Eddie Yarbrough and Eli Harold. Harold, who was traded for Ryan Bates, who now makes the team. I had Dion Lacey making this team. And then in the secondary, EJ Gaines, another guy who went down with a season-ending injury. And lastly, Raphael Bush, who has since retired. And then the new players that would make the team, I already mentioned Ryan Bates, but it's tight end Tommy Sweeney, who's been impressive in his opportunities. And then at wide receiver, Duke Williams, who's a guy who I really hummed and hawed with back in June. He's a guy I really wanted to put on the roster. I finally can say that he's shown enough to make this roster. And then on the defense, of course, Daryl Williams. Surprising development has been one of the stories of the preseason so far. At linebacker, I I thought Corey Thompson's been impressive enough to overtake Deion Lacey. So Thompson's on this team in this projection. And then in the secondary, we have a new player in Captain Munnerlin, who was signed when EJ Gaines went down. And then I reconsidered and brought Lafayette Pitts back to this 53-man roster. And lastly, to replace the retired Raphael Bush, we signed a veteran Kirk Coleman, and he's going to make this team as our third safety in this projection. So eight new players, and... Uh, If you have thoughts, opinions, leave them in the comments. I'd love to hear what you have to say. You can also tweet at me. It's at FBanaty. That's at F-B-A-N-N-A-T-Y on Twitter again. I'm sure everyone has their own opinions on who's going to make this team. So I'd love to hear your opinion. Uh, We'll find out in only a few days from now who's going to be on the initial 53-man Buffalo Bills roster. Hope you guys all enjoyed the show. We'll be back next week to get you ready for week one of the season. So until next time, go Buffalo Bills.